What's up everybody? This is John with the Unpaid Gamers with another Car Thoughts video. Today we're talking about arcade machines. So, uh, obviously I'm an older gamer. Uh, been playing since the 80s and you know back then the, uh, the arcade heyday, right? Like it was uh, very common to you would have like your Atari and kind of your more basic games at home, but if you wanted to play the latest, greatest new stuff, you had to go to the arcade. And uh, there were arcades all over the country. You know, most people had them down from the road of their house. Uh, if you're old enough, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, it's kind of something that's really. I would say I wouldn't really say lost, but it's not as common as it used to be. And uh, arcades kind of are having a little bit of a resurgence now, but it's just not uh, how it used to be at all. And then a lot of times these newer arcades are just completely different. You know, you go in and you get your pay for your card and you uh, load it up with however much you're going to play and play until that's up. Or uh, some have um, you know, your cards and you buy your entry fee or whatever and then you just play unlimited and uh, those are obviously I think everybody's favorite <laughs> so uh, and too you know oftentimes they're newer arcade machines and uh, not really focused on the retro ones so there's a big difference there um, you know I, obviously when I talk about the heyday of that stuff it was you know all the old retro arcades and pinball machines and you needed quarters you didn't have uh, card readers and stuff installed and uh, you know if you're in a popular in line for a popular game you know you put your quarter on the machine and that's like your place in line you know and uh, you play through the matches and when your turns up you put your quarter that you got in place in there and play your play your uh, game and then get to the back of the line and those are the days that I feel like are uh, very special and nostalgic for a lot of us out there and uh, you know, like I say now there's a little bit of a resurgence there's still some versions of arcades uh, but the cooler ones to me are the ones that really try to capture that magic from the 80s and stuff uh, the best one that I've been to so far is uh, in Chicago and it's the Galloping Ghost Arcade it's one of uh, I think it's the biggest in the country, actually. Uh, but it's super cool. You pay your admission. You just play all the games you want for as long as you want. You can come and go throughout the day. And it's got all the old retro stuff. Uh, some newer ones throughout the years. And just their selection is unmatched. Uh, super cool. So if you're in Chicago uh, or if you're going to Chicago, mark that on your map. It is a must-stop place. And... It's uh, also right down the road from, uh, well, not really, well, I mean, it's like 20 minutes or so from like Nether Realm Studios. So, uh, you know, a lot of the Nether Realm guys, they'll stop in there, guys and girls, they'll stop in there. A lot of the, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat, of course, was started in Chicago and uh, used a lot of local martial artists and stuff. So, a lot of those martial artists that uh, starred in the Mortal Kombat games live in that area. So they'll also stop in to uh, the Galloping Ghost Arcade. And they have like uh, pictures and stuff that you can buy that are signed by them. And you know, of course, when they're in there, they'll, they'll oftentimes have events like that with a lot of those original cast. And uh, very cool place. It's one of my favorite arcades I've ever been to. Um, and that leads me to kind of you know something that I miss and that uh, I feel a lot of us are trying to kind of recapture or have recaptured on our own and uh, have built like home arcades uh, which you know I do have in my uh, in my house as well and I don't you know I had like a full-size narc machine that I uh, well I've had a few arcade machines throughout my years so I had a full-size Street Fighter 2 uh, that I had when I lived in uh, Canada and 
I had that for a handful of years. It was uh, you know, kind of customized and I like went in and cleaned it up and restored it back to like its original art and stuff like that. And uh, I no longer have that one. Uh, my next one that I had was a full size NARC machine that I had got. And I, uh, like it was rough shape. It was pretty much gutted already. Uh, so I gutted it even more, um, gave it some attention and uh, built like a main cabinet on it. And uh, nowadays I have a lot of the arcade one-up machines and uh, they work really well. I, you know, there's a lot of um, love hate with people on those, you know, uh, they're fairly expensive and uh, the prices are con kind of continuing to go up. I think maybe they've leveled out again, but they did go up, uh, but they also continue to add a lot of features and stuff now. You know, they, they used to, when they originally came out, they were like 350 something like that. Now, oftentimes, they're about 600 or, or more. Um, and they release all kinds of different versions, the pro ones and, and all that stuff. But, you know, you used to, you know, because they're like three foot tall or whatever, and if you wanted to get them up to like a four foot, you'd have to buy a riser, which now they include the risers. Oftentimes they'll include stools, they have Wi-Fi, they have, you know, all this stuff that's uh, kind of more standard now. So the standard pricing is more, that uh, includes a lot of these features. Um, and uh, they, my favorite thing about them, you know, some of the quality of the parts could be improved, could be better. Um, they're not bad though, by any means. It's just, uh, you know, internet community, what it is, you'll read about a lot of that stuff and it's like, oh, they don't have the Samwa joysticks and they don't have, you know, typical mushy buttons and stuff like that. Really for your average person, uh, they're just fine. And you can always upgrade this stuff if you want later on. Uh, but I like them for the reasonably enough price point. I mean, it's kind of pricey if you look at it from the uh, standpoint of you can play half of these games on your computer and not buy any of this stuff. But uh, for those of us that long for that arcade nostalgia feeling and stuff, it's very cool to have these cabinets set up. And uh, I have a whole section cornered off in my basement where I have a, a ton of these set up. I block lights ran you know, all around uh, the top of the trim and stuff, and uh, a lot of, like, retro wall art and, you know, neon stuff, and uh, not really new neon, though. I like this whole thing they got going on with these LED lights that look like neon. Uh, those are pretty cool. I enjoy those a lot. They don't get hot. They don't take up a lot of room and a ton of electricity and they're not a bitch to replace if something happens because it's just like LED strip and probably cost you, you know, 10 bucks anyway. So, uh, you know, have some of that stuff. It looks cool. Still really gives that LED, uh, not LED, still really gives you that uh, fluorescent light look that uh, everybody kind of likes. So, uh, anyway, you know, I mention all this really because I'm going to pick up yet another one. Uh, NFL Blitz is coming out, so I'm adding that to my collection. I have, uh, I guess this would be number 14, but if you count the arcade one up pinball. So I have uh, 13 and then a pinball. And I'll try to name them. Let's see. So the pinball I have is the uh, Mars Attacks one, Attack on Mars. And uh, then I have, let's see, Ridge Racer, Ridge Racer, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Golden Team, uh, Space Invaders, NBA Jam, Buck Hunter, Terminator, Ninja Turtles, Killer Instinct. What am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. I do have a. Uh, the Marvel one, which is uh, not Marvel, not Marvel versus Capcom. Marvel superheroes is the cabinet, uh, but I modded it, so I have a, uh, I gutted it and I put a Raspberry Pi in it and uh, just run like a kind of a main image, and uh, it's got like eight, I don't know, 
few thousand games on there. I forget how many. I mean, maybe that would said it. But pretty much, you know, any of the other ones, like the classic style that is not uh, on any of those other ones, it's on that one. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of sticklers with a lot of that stuff. Like, you know, certain games like the aspect ratio, right? Like Pac-Man and stuff, they're more like vertical screen based versus horizontal. Uh, and a lot of people get really bent out of shape if that's not really, you know, if they, <laughs> if you have a horizontal screen and you have the, it's really not a big deal though. Like it shrinks the game, the size down a little bit, but, uh, I don't know, I, I feel, uh, with kind of your basic modded setup like that, it, uh, it really does the trick and you can play a lot of those games and, uh, as long as you're not super picky, it's, uh, just fine for almost any of those things. Uh, you know, some of those, like, you know, I could, of course, instead of getting, like, the NFL Blitz, I could, um, just add it to that modded cabinet, but in order to do that one specifically, you know, I gotta up the horsepower a little bit, and a Raspberry Pi won't really cover that, so I'd have to gut it, uh, somewhat again, and, uh, make it more computer-based, which I've thought about doing anyway. And it's not really a big deal for me, because uh, if you've watched other videos, you know I'm an IT guy. So, you know, I have tons of computer parts laying around, and I can probably just throw something in there to run all this stuff uh, that I got in my garage or something. But um, I have, um, I just had that pie in there, and I've thought about putting a, a computer in there anyway, because I'm really interested in... Um, The, uh, shit, what do they call it? It's the gun, sending guns, right? They, I uh, missed my fucking thing. Missed my turn, man. Um, I like the sending guns because there's so many good light gun games out there that I want to play. And, you know, I have the Terminator cabinet. I have the, uh, Big Buck Hunter. <laughs> Those are great for lack of a better term, modding community. And they, they focus mostly on soft mods, but it's a team encoder. And uh, they're looking at doing like a soft mod for Terminator to add other light gun games in, but they haven't quite got there yet. Uh, and soft mod means, you know, you don't really change out any components. You're just kind of loading additional software on the internal board that's there and uh, lets you do other stuff. So for example, I have my pinball machine modded and it has uh like all the arcade one-up tables on that one machine it has uh zen pinball it has uh pinball arcade on there so there's quite a few tables that are just on there and i didn't have to take out any components or anything i just hooked a computer into it hit a couple buttons and uh it just handled the rest for you so uh if you haven't heard of that or you need that information look up team encoder they have a good website. Their stuff is very easy to use, and uh, it's great for, like, soft mods. So uh, they mostly did the um, the pinball one, as far as arcade one-up stuff goes. The, the pinball machine, they have, like, some stuff for, like, the early Gen 1 and 2 cabinets, uh, like the party arcade things, and uh, they're looking and currently working on, like, stuff for uh, some of these others. So... Uh, Terminator is one of the other ones because you know there was the Terminator cabinet real cabinet and then uh, the up kind of the cabinet upgrade launched with uh, Aerosmith so they want to put that on that cabinet and uh, in turn will allow access uh, for other more basic light gun games too but anyway aside from all of that you can um, you, know, you can also get these sending guns, which is what the technology that Buck Hunter and Terminator both uses, and um, you know, get your own sending light guns and put a PC in there and get them working and kind of install your own light gun games. And uh, depending on the results of how they do a Terminator, I may look into doing that and uh, do an additional mod on a modded cabin. So. That's on the on the radar, something I may do. But uh, today I'm picking up the uh, NFL Blitz and 
you know, I probably will do it because it's a much lengthier video than um, what I'm doing right now. But I probably will do a little more detailed uh, car thoughts on maybe some of these arcade cabinets. Because I have so many. A lot of people haven't played them and want to know what's up. So I uh, will do an additional one, at least talking about the Blitz and how I like that since I mentioned it here. And I may follow up and just talk about some of these other uh, arcade one up ones that I have specifically and uh, tell you thoughts on that. I might even talk about my... Uh, you know, my modded one a little bit you know, for people that are curious of that. So, uh, anyway, if you don't comment or whatever, you know, obviously I see based on views which ones people care about and don't. But uh, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about that today since I'm going to pick up one. That's something that I like, and I uh, have these laid out, like I said, in a spot in my basement to create that home arcade experience. And uh, there's other stuff I have going on in there. You know, I, I mounted a TV on the wall, and I'll play like music videos and stuff up there while I'm show high scores and stuff like that uh, so I like doing what I can to try to uh, recreate that experience from the 80s I have a kind of a it's really an old computer surround sound little mini system and stuff um, that I had stuck around in that section and have it routed to the TV so when you play the music videos or whatever it uh, you know gives a lot more uh, a lot better sound so far and stuff like that so a lot of cool things um you know, maybe even a show video of that or something sometime probably not but uh <laughs> you never know so i'll at least talk more about it in the future and uh, so stay tuned um i'll let you know how nfl blitz goes so until next time